Have you ever thought about this? The toxic ghetto behavior of a few can shape the perception of the entire community. In this week's episode, we're going to dive into a tough but necessary conversation. A conversation I'm not seeing nowhere else. It's a toxic ghetto hood ratchet display of some black Americans that we see online influencing how the world view black Americans. After a recent family trip to the Bahamas, I couldn't help to notice a shift in how we were treated compared to other groups. And it raised a critical question. Are we being judged by the actions of some people online? In this week's episode, I am joined by Rogan, also known as this Bohemian gal on YouTube, who was originally from the Bahamas to help unpack this trend and explore whether the digital world is creating real world consequences for black Americans as we step beyond borders. Let's get into it. The reason why I asked you to come on to this mm -hmm. conversation is because I recently went to the Bahamas um, yes. for my mother's and my bonus daughter's birthday, their birthday at their part. So it worked out perfectly. Okay. And while we're in the Bahamas, I noticed like a different direction of how we were being treated compared to others, right? I guess us like this. You know how they always, black folks mm -hmm. always go like this, like, you know, old yeah. school slave things that we just keep holding on to. So I noticed black people were being treated differently. And I, I noticed it wasn't everybody from the Bahamas was doing that. It was just mainly, maybe some people here and there was a few pockets of people from the Bahamas that perhaps worked at a, you know, at the resort or somebody maybe mm -hmm. working at the place where you get the, um, the, um, little trinkets the tourist trinkets from oh sure or maybe over there at the fish fry you know about the fish fry mm -hmm. you're from the Bahamas, right? mm -hmm. so i start noticing different pockets of the way we've been treated by different people but like i said it wasn't everybody even when we went to atlantis for like a day pass it was the same thing i noticed it um when you say that you notice that you were being treated differently do you mind just so i don't make a, a blanket statement but how how mm -hmm. did you per perceive that oh, you were being treated differently so we sitting on the beach chilling and you know, there's a waitress is serving drinks. So, of course, we're going to be chilling. We want drinks. The waitress walked past us and go to the white lady and get drinks. I was like, all right, cool. Maybe she didn't see us, whatever. Then she go past us again, go to another white guy and ask her for drinks. They go to another, you know, it's like they kept missing us for whatever reason. We have on our bracelet. We have on all <laughs> the paraphernalia that we need to have to say that we part of this establishment. And... <laughs> For whatever reason, we kept going to overlook to the point that my wife went and got some drinks. It wasn't like it was mm. free drinks that it was included. It wasn't an all-inclusive resort. It was something that was being paid for. We didn't mind paying. We already paid to be here. So where we stayed at, it was um, a cruise, like a lot of cruise ships docked there. Yeah. And, you know, Carnival came out. You know, everybody came out. They blew Carnival towels. They didn't mm -hmm. realize where they standing at. So now we see some white folks. They lay their towel down and just chill. The black mm -hmm. folks, they were told to get up and keep it moving. And I'm like, this is really happening what? in front of my eyes. Yes. The the workers were telling them to get up and keep yes. moving? Yes. Mm. Because it was a private mm. beach and only people who stayed at the resort was supposed to stay at the beach. But oh, you're supposed okay. to go to the next beach where it's not private, where it's public. So you have to walk uh -huh. past our beach to go to another beach. But, <laughs> you know, Eric, you could tell who's who's from the carnival. I mean, of course from a cruise because they have, you know, like the book bags and yeah. they have all the stuff because mm -hmm. they came off a boat. They have the their paraphernalia. Blue towel. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the people who were black were told to get up and leave or they couldn't sit down or they could just stand in the water and the other people would just, they could sit there and chill. They was actually and getting the, drinks the white, and everything. The, the white people who were there were a part of Carnival as well. Yes. I don't understand that. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say in that regard because obviously that to me, I would obviously look at that and said, I feel like I'm being discriminated against. So why is it that I, I if, if this if the situation where all the people from Carnival were told to move, then I'd say, yeah, everybody had to move. It's a private beach. But yeah. to leave some and to remove others. Absolutely not. That's that's unacceptable. Yeah. So like, I don't we, I don't get that because we sitting there all day. We love sitting at the beach. We don't like I said, I live in Atlanta yeah. now, so we're not near a beach. Like, I'm not near a beach no more. I used to live in New York. So I love being at the beach when I'm on vacation. So I can sit there for hours and I like people watching. And you just notice little pockets of things. I'm like, okay, that yeah. person is leaving, but this person not. Then yeah. another situation, we go to the uh, fish fry, right? So like you said, I guess the mindset of everybody's a guest in your country. So some people were very nice, right? Some people like, oh, come, go eat here, go eat there. So we finally go to a mm -hmm. restaurant. I've never had service like this in my life. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like we waited forever to sit down. They finally gave us the sit down. Mm-hmm. We seen people who come in after us getting food. We had to li- literally go to the waitress and say, "Yo, where's our food?" And she was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, my bad." Then another waitress come out. Then the manager come out. Then they apologize. They didn't give us food. The food is cold. It all come out in different times. I got hair in my food, and I'm mm-hmm. like, "How is this supposed to be this great establishment?" And yeah, this is such bad service. But you see everybody not only coming in after us, sitting down before us, eating yeah. before us, and leaving, and we still sitting there. You went to Nassau, correct? Yes. That's where I'm from. Um, first thing I want to say is I do apologize for that. I mean, I know I'm not the one who perpetrated anything against you and your family, but I do want to apologize for that. Um, it, being in a country that is tourism-based, everything revolves around tourism. It's almost ingrained in the people to treat your tourists like with the greatest care and the greatest amount of respect. It's right. so ingrained that even as a child, when I would watch television, we have a, a, a broadcasting station known as ZNS, which you guys would probably say ZNS. Um, I used to watch these videos that were put on from the Ministry of Tourism that would basically be skits telling you that we're all a part of tourism, whether we work directly at the hotels or at a restaurant or not. And this is how you treat your guests. They didn't say this is how you treat your white guests. They didn't say this is how you treat your Hispanic guests or your black guests. Mm-hmm. They just say this is how you treat your guests. So I think a lot of people who are in the tourism industry are hell-bent on making sure that you have a good time, especially in an industry where they're looking for tips. It doesn't augur well for them to be disrespectful to anyone. Right. Um, and so I do apologize for that because that, that should have never happened. You're spending money in our country and we're grateful for that. So I'm like, why are we being treated this way by people who literally look like they could be my cousin, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we definitely look like we could be cousins because yep. I guess from the transatlantic stage, trade, right, we just a, mm-hmm. a boat stop away from different, different boat stops. For I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we like my son was there. Like, people were asking him, was he from the Bahamas? Because how he looked. Matter of fact, somebody came up to me like, yo cousin. I'm like, cousin, I don't know you. And she was like, I thought you, you look like, you look like, you look like you could be behaving. You absolutely yeah, do. So I, that's yep. what people were saying to me out there. So yep. I'm like, I'm, I'm meeting people who yeah. look like we could be related. And, I'm getting treated like this. And I'm like, why? So it dawned on me. I think it's because of how black Americans are seen throughout all the different aspects of entertainment, right? Mm. Say social media, say um, music, say television, say the news. Everybody gets the same kind of information through the same way. Now it's through the iPhone, through the Android, what have you. Right. Everybody's seeing the same things. So you see a, some girl twerking on top of a Nissan Altima going down 85. <laughs> you go, Everybody's like, damn, what's going on out there? This is how black women act. Or oh, you see some young dude in front of a store with his pants sagging, his drawers showing, and got guns in his waist. Like, it's a, it's a perception that we put out there, and we don't separate ourselves from that. So, like, for example, mm-hmm. the illegal migrants coming into the country. I know so many people from Latin countries is separating themselves from the illegal migrants because of the, the stigma of the illegal migrants. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you illegal migrant, you, what, whatever Donald Trump said, you rape, kill, whatever. You know, yeah. not everybody's doing that, but they know to separate right. themselves. And even the illegal migrants who come in and who just want to work, separating themselves from those people mm-hmm. as well. Because mm-hmm. they know yeah. if we attach ourselves to that group of people, everybody going to think everybody's the same way. But we don't do that. We just right. constantly say, oh, it's for the culture. You see somebody, um, like I said, twerking on top of a Kia Soul. It's mm-hmm. for the culture. You see... You know, some rapper talking about drill rapping, how I shoot on my ops. It's for the culture. You know, yeah. I did a video about Dr. Dre and how Dr. Dre got all these um, accolades. Sexual... Accolades. A- 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 accolades in in the light of the fact that he has so many allegations against him for abusing women. And yeah, yes. I totally and, saw that. Mm-hmm. And I said, yo, it's crazy because he got allegations of beating women, mm-hmm. putting guns to women. I think mm-hmm. he's, Michelet said he shot, Dr. Dre shot at her. But miss, mm-hmm. then he His come ex-wife. up with headphones called called Beats, Beats. by Dre, right? And he yeah. got a lifetime I, achievement it, award because of that. It is. It's out of pocket. It's disrespectful. Um, it's something that even sometimes God, God. Bahamians themselves complain about because you have instances where Bahamians are treated as second class citizens in their own home, where mm-hmm. tourists are pedestalized when they walk through the door and the experience that you have are experiences that a lot of Bahamians myself have had when we come into a restaurant 
where they will put a tourist ahead and you're waiting there forever to be served. Wow. Um, again, this is one of the things where I'm sure, and, and, and even on my channel, I did a, a video and people can check it out if they want to because people think that I'm just here criticizing the United States. I, I am very critical of my own country as well. I mean, the truth is the truth, even if it hurts. And in that video, I said the truth about the the truth about Nassau that I can no longer hide. And the fact of the matter is, in that video, I talked about the poor customer service. We have a beautiful country. We mm -hmm. have some amazing servers. And I think people need to understand that the Bahamas is made up of many countries. It's not just Nassau. That's just the capital. And yeah. you go into other islands and they have impeccable service. But in Nassau, just like if you were to go into a major city like New York or California, sometimes you deal with individuals who are just not the great at not the the greatest at giving great service um and but i certainly and i'm not disregarding anything that you said because i as a black person would certainly notice that i'm being treated differently from somebody else when they're walking through the door but i also want to let you know that it's not just because you're a black american because bahamians too get that same type of treatment depending on where they go and so as a result someone like me i already know Yes, the fish fry is very popular and there's one spot that I really like out there. But more often than not, I would go to a different establishment to eat because I want my food on time. I want impeccable service. I want when the if something is wrong, the manager comes out and says, hey, I'm going to take that off the bill. I'm going to take care of it for you. And that doesn't have naturally happen at the fish fry. OK, so, you know, it, it's not just you. And I but I, I, I'm really sorry that was your experience because, yeah, who's trying to pay I mean, their money to have sucky service regarding the lady on the beach who was passing you by? I don't understand that at all. But I, I will I will share a scenario with you. Um, I, I'm somebody who ate out a lot when I was in the Bahamas. And um, there is and I'm going to be so honest with you. So very honest. There is is a very obvious difference in the way that a lot of the servers are treated when it comes to African-American customers versus non-African-American customers. Mm -hmm. I have personally witnessed with my own eyes being in a restaurant where a server will say, you know, is there anything else that you need? And, and this has happened too many times for me to ignore it, where the person, the guest will say, if I needed something, I would call you or they, they'll talk down to them in a very demeaning and degrading way. Mm. This is something I've witnessed. This is something that my friends and family members, because a lot of people work in the tourism industry in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, mm -hmm. they will come home and share these stories, these horror stories of dealing with some African-American customers. That's not all. It's not. Yeah. But it's enough to give people pause when they say, you know what? The last time I addressed this person, they said, if I needed something, I would call. Stop, stop harassing me. So they might just yeah. say, I don't want to deal with that. Let me cross over and go over to this other person. And I guess if they need me, they'll call me. So, again, not excusing it, but I've seen with my own eyes that sort of reaction. So it may give some people pause to say, let them call me if they, they need me because I've been have had my head chewed off too many times um, to, you know, so now I know better. I just want to take this time out to stop and say, if you guys are liking this content, please follow Broken Traditions. I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you guys want to reach out to me, email me, Laron at BrokenTraditions.com and sign up for the newsletter at www.BrokenTraditions.com. See, that goes back to the the global, I guess, reputation that we have, right? So, we, like I said, we go back to the social media, or, or entertainment, music, all the stuff we talked about. Then now we got people who actually in the country acting an ass. And yep. disrespectful to people. And I'm not going to lie. If I'm being disrespected by a group of people, pretty soon I'm assuming that's how all pe those people are. I'm not. I wouldn't put that on the people that's in the Bahamas that's working as in tourism to not think that going forward. Because if it happened, what, three times? That's just what it is. It, it, that's, I, I, I can't, agree. I can't fault that. But it's, I, that's I, what it is. I agree. It's not. It's so. It's no, and and it's not fair because you come into the country with your family and you just want a great time. And other people come in there because this is not. And I always stress this is not all African Americans, but it's a significant enough number where it does give some people pause. Um, I, I I read articles all the time. I see people here in the United States, black servers, and I worked as a server before. Black servers, when they're polled, they talk about how they don't want to serve. African-American. This isn't black Bahamian saying this. This is black American mm. saying, I don't want to serve my own people because they're not tipping 
the way the other people are tipping. They're extremely mm -hmm. demanding or they're being loud with us or they're being very disrespectful. I think the problem is people, can they confuse service with servitude. And someone is giving you a service as a waiter. That doesn't make them your servant. That doesn't make them a slave. And so you yeah. don't treat them disrespectfully. And so when you have enough of that interaction, you obviously are going to ha start to have some perceived thoughts about, about people. The other day I was inside of um, a store that I understand is frequently, um, uh, there's, there's a high theft in the store by people of our color. And yeah. as a result, <laughs> as our color, as a result, <laughs> Two men kept following me around as I was shopping. And inside, I'm like, I've never stolen anything out of a store before. But at the same time, I'm like, but I get it. They've had yeah. enough people who look like me walk through the door. So I have to say, Rogan, calm down. Don't feel any sort of way. Just get what you got to get and get out. Does it feel good? No, it doesn't. But I know that I, as the innocent person, I'm suffering for the guilty. And I yeah. think that same thing happens when, in, you know, in restaurants um, and when you go into Caribbean countries or you go anywhere, I think you have to be very careful about, you know, you have to be respectful of people's culture and you have to know how to read the room. And you certainly don't go there to make a spectacle of yourself. And I'm not saying this was your case or, you know, a lot of people's case, but some people do do this. They go mm -hmm. into a country and it's like, it's just like they're they're on their worst behavior. The same things that you would roll your eyes at in Atlanta if you were in a restaurant, the same things yeah. that irritate you, the same people who do these things, they travel, they go on cruise ships, they go on flights and they go to the countries and they take those same attitudes with them. And so can you legitimately blame someone if they feel a certain way? I wouldn't. But as someone who is served, I also know I have to treat everybody. It's like a blank slate for me. Yeah. And when you walk through the door, yes, I may have had this crappy experience with these people over here or that group over there, but I have to know Laurent and his family ain't that. And until you show me that, I'm not going to act in a different way. But that's that's Rogan. That might be Laurent. Mm -hmm. That's not everybody, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I wouldn't even put that on to be for everybody. I, I would assume that I would assume that more people who have bad experiences would react in that way. Like you said, I didn't realize, you know, I didn't think about people traveling with the same American mindsets of jumping on tabletops and twerking at restaurants. You know what I'm saying? People travel like that. People think that's normal because it's good in Southeast Atlanta, but it's not good when you go to France. So no. And when you take that mindset globally, it's it's I don't know, it's a greater impact for everybody. So now I'm looked at like, oh, I'm about to start twerking and Break this, and I don't know. People don't break this no more unless the Olympics. But I'm gonna start break this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start. I don't know what that break dancing was that they did. <laughs> but yeah, but, but, it was, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna see it as a negative stereotype because I'm attached to these people. You know, I'm coming off the same flight as these people. I'm staying yeah. in the same hotel as these people, and they. I don't know. We. I, I really feel like we all lumped up into one group of people now because of negative stereotypes of a small percentage of people in this country. Yeah. But I think too, this is why it's so important to always call out these bad, bad behaviors. I think you do a fantastic job of that on your platform on Instagram. I love your, your, your platform. The only reason to be honest with you, I, I should subscribe to it. I should follow you is because you, <laughs> you, you post so much content you post so much content and then I have other people who post so much content. I kind of try to divest myself of too much, like <laughs> ingesting so much content. That's the only reason. But trust me, the support is there um, mm -hmm. because I do love what you do. And I love the accountability that you present. And and I love the fact that you're you're strong enough to, to call these things out. And people might say, oh, there's no strength in that. That's a ton of strength to go against the grain and say these bad behaviors are something that we should be calling out. We shouldn't be encouraging the BS. Um, and so I applaud you for that on your platform. And it is unfortunate that we are being lumped in. It is not just you. As I walk through uh, D.C. and Maryland and Virginia, nobody knows I'm a damn Bahamian unless I open my mouth and they hear my mm -hmm. accent. They see a black woman. I'm a black woman walking these streets. And yeah. so I don't like being lumped in with with the foolishness. But I, I understand that unless I and other people stand up and speak out against these things, that's what's going to happen. You also yeah. have to understand that in these foreign countries, the cultures are so different. You go into Japan, if you know anything about Japanese culture, they're very polite. 
People don't even, they, if you go to tip in Japan, they're like, what are you doing? You don't do that. I, I went on a cruise to St. Lucia and a banker, I had to stop to the bank. I had an issue and she, the banker helped me out in such a great deal that I took $20 to tip her. And she looked at me like I pulled out a gun because wow. and she was like, you don't do that. And here in the bank, I don't want people to think I'm stealing money and all that stuff in my country. You, 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 it's easy. You just slip somebody 20 bucks and say, here, go and have lunch. They say, oh, thank you, sweetie. Thanks, babes. Mm -hmm. That's the culture. So you have to be aware of the culture. And when you go into countries that are a little bit more conservative, a little bit more quiet, you read the room. I'm not saying not be yourself, but be respectful. The same way you go to work and yes, you are yourself, but you are respectful in that work setting or you're respectful in a church setting or you're, you're being honored somewhere and you're respectful in that setting, be respectful when you go into people's country. Yeah, I wouldn't come to the States and make a fool of myself. I, I won't do it. But it's so much on the line when you do that. Yeah. When you just make a fool of yourself for other countries. I mean, we hear the stories about women going to Dubai thinking that they could get them a Lamborghini and twerk on top of the Lamborghini, and next thing you know, they locked up for 20 years. For going Hello. through stuff like that. Yeah, you can't go to other countries and act their ass. You, or, you I'll give you another example. You got these passport bros going to Colombia <laughs> wearing 40 chains looking like Lloyd Banks and thinking they're yep. not going to get robbed. Robbed. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> the, these countries, I mean, I think sometimes people hear, oh, it's a paradise. And they think utopia. Mm -hmm. My brother always says, you know, the Bahamas, he always talked about, he said, the Bahamas is a real place in the real world yeah. with real people. Mm -hmm. And some of those real people are real gangsters. And some of those real people are real nasty, as you've encountered on your trip. You know what <laughs> I mean? And so, unfortunately, but you you don't go over there being flashy. You Again, you read the room because you just don't know where you are. You yeah. may think you know, but you don't. It's easy to get robbed. Yeah. Like I said, go back to the passport bros. You think... You go on to some app like you going on Tinder to find you some Colombian baddie. No, they, you're going to get <laughs> robbed. You're going to get lied up. <laughs> you might not make it home. Child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You definitely have to be very careful when you're traveling. And and what that's to my country. That's anywhere. I mean, yeah. shoot, me coming to the United States. I, I You know, it's funny because a lot of people will say, when you go into the Caribbean, you got to be careful. You got to be. I live in D.C., a.k.a. shoot em up Phil. Where any yeah. morning I wake up, someone has been shot or there's been some robbery or I go outside and my neighbor's car has been like the, the windows have been smashed. You know, this is not uncommon for me. So yeah. you, now I have family back home saying, you got to be careful to D.C. I saw what <laughs> happened in D.C. <laughs> you know, so it's any and everywhere you go, you know, it's just you, you, you got to be aware of your surroundings and just understand and try to respect the culture and just just try to blend in as much as possible, no matter where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But but I certainly do understand where you're coming from about not wanting <laughs> to be lumped in with everybody else who's doing the mm -hmm. crap, you know, but I think a, a big reason is because we just in our community and people try to excommunicate me from the black community just because I'm foreign, but I am a part of this black community yeah. and African-Americans are my brothers and my sisters. I have zero issue with them, but I, I wish we would be um more vocal about calling out the crap. And I'm always happy to read through your comments on your Instagram page. And yes, you have your one or two people who will say, oh, I don't like Laron because he always putting these stuff up here to be um, uh, provocative and all that stuff. He, he always just trying to get a reaction. But the majority of the people that I see under your comments are people who are like-minded, who mm -hmm. say, I'm tired of this foolishness and I'm tired of y'all excusing the behaviors. Like, why can't we just call things out as we see them and stop protecting people and cloaking people in our culture because one reflects poorly on the other and I and it's sad that it it, it does it really is sad that you could see four people acting like idiots and they happen to be black and you think that's everybody but it's not but we have to be the ones to step forward and say not on my watch that's what community is all about you know yes and we got to shun people like you know looking at other community like the Jewish community they, they're not allowed that I, I've no, had the pleasure. That. I've had the pleasure of being around a lot of Jewish people. And let me tell you something. I was jealous. And when I say me jealous, too. I don't mean it in a bad way, right? And I know you don't mean that in a bad way. But I saw a lot of nuclear families. 
Mm-hmm. I saw a lot of entrepreneurs. I saw a lot of people going to the synagogue. I saw people just being around their kids, very family oriented. I've had the pleasure of sitting at a table. I mean, like it reminded me of like growing up back in the Bahamas, like years ago when my grandmother was alive and mm-hmm. selling meals, you sitting around a table and y'all talking, no phones, no nothing. And, and it's like, that is so beautiful to me. You yeah. don't, you don't hear about these situations of Jewish people jumping up in the Popeyes on the tabletop and all that stuff. You just, you don't see that. And I wish we would, and then I wish we would just hold ourselves to a higher standard. And when people like Laron calls it out, you don't just say this person is, and I, this is my pet peeve, a coon or an Uncle Tom for saying this <laughs> stuff. Like, that, oh, that that triggers the hell out of me. I'm like, really? It don't bother me. <laughs> oh, it triggers the hell. I hate it. I hate it because it's like you have someone who is showing that they care and they believe that we could rise above all this trash. And mm-hmm. yet you, you you choose to use these to these weaponized words to bring them down. It don't it won't make me stop. It'll make me lean in even more because I do care. And yeah. but but it's annoying to me. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't find it. Off- I mean, it, it is offensive, yes, but I don't care. I don't care about it. Like, I know you're saying that because you deflected because you want because your baby mom is the one that's twerking at Taco Bell. So you deflected <laughs> because of that. I get it. You know what I'm saying? You deflected because it's your yeah, your baby daddy out there selling crack to feed the babies, like Biggie Small said, or Juicy. I get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get it. I, 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 Hit I dogs holler. Talk- Hit yeah, dogs and holler. I, and I always say to, <clears throat> I know who I'm talking to. I know you. I grew up with y'all. I went to school with y'all. Yeah. You know, I work with y'all. So I yeah. know who you are, and I know your deflection. I get it. I know your love. What about it? I know that. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, so I, I get remember. It. I can't. I can't remember the guy who said, "Oh God, it was a video I did." And they were like, this lady was saying, oh, what a, they were talking about Atlanta, I believe. They were talking about Atlanta's, um, oh, I think I was doing the video on Keith, uh, oh, what's his Keith name? Lee. Keith, Keith Lee. Keith, Thank yes. you. I almost said Keith Murray. What the hell? The Keith Lee. <laughs> you sh- you showed your age right there. <laughs> I know. Keith Murray. What the frick? <laughs> Keith Lee. And he was, um, you know, criticizing the Atlanta restaurant scene and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And. And this lady was like, oh, well, what about the white restaurants that, that you know, don't don't treat their customers right? And this guy was like, what, a, what do you mean? What about them? Like, they ain't us and we ain't them. You know, like, get it straight. Like, they get to do what they do and they get to still be successful. It's like we have this barrier and we're trying to make sure that we're successful and getting our business out there. So we do have to go the extra mile. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. And I don't want to hear about what about this person? What about let's talk about the matter at hand. I, mm-hmm. It gets on my nerve when we're because to me it sounds like whenever I hear somebody say what about this or whatever, I, I know you might think this is a stretch, but it always reminds me of when someone says black La- black lives matter, and I'm not talking about the group, the organization, but the sentiment. And someone says, but all lives matter, but we talk about black lives, so let's stay yeah. on focus. Let's let's stay focused on what we're talking about. And so that's how I hit what I feel when they say, but what about this? No, let's talk about what we're talking about. People always want to move the goalposts constantly. Yes. I mean, I've never seen so many goalposts moved in my life since I started doing this. And oh, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I don't know how you deal with it because I think I, you, you get a lot of it in your comment section. You're very strong. No, honestly, man. on Instagram, I don't see most of the comments because how? I post, I, I'll tell you how. I post it, I, I engage for like maybe 30 minutes. I have to move on. I can't be in there, I can't do it. I've heard content creators cesspool. say that. I can't stay in there. I've and heard now, content creators say that. I was doing the same thing on YouTube, but now on YouTube, because this is where I'm really trying to build my community, I'm staying in more comments on YouTube. But as far as like TikTok and Instagram, no. You, can't you do post it. and you I, I I've heard content creators say that they will engage for the first twenty or thirty minutes and then they're out. And I've always I, I, Maybe this is just me. I've always been of the mindset that if I, if I, especially on my YouTube channel, because that's my main platform, mm-hmm. when I ask someone to leave comments down below, I, I don't want to say, come on and comment and then dip. Because yeah. sometimes people just find you like two weeks later and they're saying something that could be really poignant. And so I just like to engage. But I mm-hmm. realize that that's going to have to ease. I'm going to have to ease up off that because for my own sanity, I don't want to stay 
in the cesspool, as you put it. I just don't mm-hmm. want to be waiting in that because it's just too much. We're not meant as human beings. We're, we're not designed to know everybody's opinion about us. That's yes. why we're not mind readers. We're not supposed to know what you think and how you personally feel about us. It's just not healthy. So I think I am going to get to that point where I follow your lead I, I, in I 20 got, minutes and I'm, I'm out. See, Mike has bad knees said this right here. Post and ghost. Just post, post and the ghost. ghost. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Post and ghost. Yeah. Post and ghost. Oh, my sometimes. gosh. I have to. I like that. Because, man, it, it gets bad. It gets really bad out there. Yeah. And, I mean, I've had people call me. Like, they have my personal number. Yo, you see this? Well, look at your comments. Then I'm like, no, I didn't. And I'm yeah, like, so don't bring it to this. me. Yes, they like, nah, man, I can't believe they wow. said this about you. Like, I don't care. I mean, what am I supposed pe- to do? People, get, people, if they care about you, they get offended for you because they, they, they know or, you and they don't want that, you know? Or, or, or since, or, or <laughs> this is my wife, friends, this. my wife friends do this. If now they know that I don't read all the comments, or they wait till they come over the house. And they were like, oh, let me pull this video that you said this. Let me tell you about this. Black women, they, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want it in that regard. I don't want, I don't, if I'm, if I'm deliberately trying to avoid it, I don't want you to bring it to my doorstep, you know? Yeah. But like I said, there's some people who care. Like I have friends who will say, oh, they said this about you, but I know you. And I'm like, just leave it alone. I, I, I try not to even get too nasty in the comment section. The way I treat it is if I don't want my comment printed in the New York Times or on a billboard, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to engage in a negative way with you. I might stand my ground, but I'm out of here yeah. before I get to that. I don't, two places I don't go is back and forth. So good luck. Yeah. You hear my wife in the comments laughing because she know how her friends are. So. <laughs> Kay Alexis. <laughs> hey, Kay. So, thank you so much for coming on. If you need thank me to come you. onto your platform for something. Oh, then, hell you know, yeah. Just so yeah. you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Be right here. I like yes. building these little friendships and partnerships, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you just might want a different perspective. And I love collaborating. I do. We just have to get the damn schedule together. Then we'll be Yes, good. yes. I mean, so I you have an open invitation. Home. Okay. Oh, perfect. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah. So, so you open it, but this is your if home. If I'm not traveling, then after that. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully when you go back, and hopefully you don't the bad I'm experience that you had. I'm not going back. <laughs> Listen, if you go back, go to another island, please, because it's a diff- it's it, to me, it's like someone saying, I-, I went to New York, so I'll never go back to America. No. When you have Nashville, Tennessee, which I'm going to next week, you have oh, so nice. many places that are just amazing where they have great Southern hospitality. So in the Bahamas, they have great island hospitality. So, I, you know, it's going to take a while, I'm sure. And I don't blame you because if I had that bad experience, I probably would be turned off as well. But just know that there are 700 islands so i mean like all ain't inhabited but it's way more than just nassau nassau okay, has I, a lot I, of flaws i don't know if my wife still listen i do smell her cooking so I'm, maybe i'll <laughs> let her know that and hopefully that she be convinced and like, give it okay, another shot give yeah, another shot she, another island another island yeah she like could always tell so. you where that's yeah. good she's a woman after my own heart <laughs> <laughs> she always want to travel somewhere like me leaving in a few weeks good Go somewhere yeah it's always yeah somewhere. man you right, but, but thank you so much thank you i appreciate it of great course. conversation i might have like three episodes off of this there you go yep. <laughs> <laughs> repurpose all your content you gotta work too yeah. hard work smart <laughs> yeah, exactly all, all right. right thank you bye laron see bye. you later <laughs> hope you guys appreciate this episode hope you guys like this episode uh let me know how you feel about this in the comments let me know about your thoughts about this man uh, myself and rogan we had a great conversation actually it's a part two to this conversation I asked you guys on the uh, community tab, should I do one full episode? But you guys voted for two separate episodes. So be on the lookout for the second part of this episode, which is completely not related to this part of the episode. We like really had two episodes recorded in that session. One of the things we were talking about earlier was about, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Dr. Dre and how, and this just goes back to how I, like I said, we, we just kind of allow the crap inside of our, our, our community. Um, the fact that this man is celebrated. I'm not saying people should be punished forever, but it, there just seems to be this double standard. I look at the way that P. Diddy was ostracized and people were tearing him down after um, Cassie came out and said what she said and she sued mm-hmm. she sued him and, and all of a sudden he was persona non grata, but Dr. Trey is still getting awards and, you know, 
being put on stage and people are like, oh, Dre is like the greatest producer ever. And yes, he's a great producer, but um, let's talk about also what he's done and let's not forget that, you know? Yeah, they, they can't they can't erase that history, but they try to. You know, they always talk about us uh, taking down Confederate statues, but what about, mm -hmm. not, not to say what about ism, but Dr. Dre movie, they didn't mention nothing about Michelet. They didn't mention no. nothing about the stuff, the domestic stuff that Dr. Ray, Dr. Yeah. Dre went through in that movie, uh, Straight yeah. Outta Compton. Like, yeah. yeah, you can talk about Easy e you can talk about Jerry Heller, you can talk mm -hmm. about Ice Cube, but you're not going to talk about the real deal with Dr. Dre? Right, come, right. That's not, come on now, right. that's not right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure they had their reasons for that. I mean, they had some level of involvement in that movie, did they, they not? They yes. So, yes. So, of course, he's going to curate what people see, um, and that's why I think it's, you know, in a way, I like people being involved in their projects, but in a way, I don't because I, I feel like we don't get to see, or as we say at the Bahamas, hear the full hundred, like hear the full story. And mm -hmm. I think that's why I like for people on the outside to kind of do these stories because that's when you hear everything. I yeah. mean, your past is your past. You can, there's a way for him to say, listen, this is who I was or this is what I did. I don't know if I've ever heard him even confess to, to any of this stuff other than like cracking jokes and Eminem's song, Guilty no, Conscience. So I did a video on it. He did actually. He didn't confess. So, um, remember um, D Barnes, right? So D Barnes. Of course, I do. Which was a horrific story. Yeah. Horrific story. First, they said, you know, in the song, he slapped D Barnes. It wasn't a slap. This man he ran pushed her, her down. Uh, yes, grabbed her by her head, dragged her to the women's yep. bathroom, and mm -hmm. banged her head against the wall. That's yep. not a it slap. It wasn't a slap. Nope. And one of the things that he had to cop out to was a PSA announcement, and he had to do like, don't hit women type of PSA announcement. <laughs> you could Google it. Wow. Go on YouTube and Google it. Like, I'm going to because I've never yeah. even, yeah. Google Dr. Wow. Dre PSA announcement. It's so cheesy. It's so short. All he says, this is Dr. Dre. That's all he says. It's, I mean, it's a, what, 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 what precipitated that? That PSA? What, what happened? Because what, what of led what happened to... with D Barnes. Oh, because after she started talking out, uh, speaking out? No, because she what? sued. She sued him. And not uh... only she sued Dr. Dre, I'm going to give you a little history because, like I said, I did a video yeah, on this. Yeah, please Not do. Not only she sued Dr. Dre, she oh, also sued NWA. NWA. Because got it. MC Ren went on MTV and said, you got what you deserve. Matter of fact, next time we see you, we're going to whoop your ass. Mm -hmm. So they threatened her again mm -hmm. on MTV. Mm -hmm. it was this one's already traumatized. Yes, Yella, Ren, and uh, Easy e did say that to her while it was on MTV and Dr. Dre, I guess, was going through what he was going through. This is a man whose wife is or ex-wife has also talked about him uh, putting a gun to her head on two occasions. Yes. And like I said, Michelle I, said he shot at her. Mm -hmm. So you're not telling me three people are lying. Yeah. You're not telling me that. No, I'm not believing that at all. Yeah. And, 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 and again, the excuses that come out of the community where there's a lot of victim blaming or the woman blaming and these are the same people who will quickly jump into the comment section when it's somebody that they care about or love and talk about protect black women at all costs like miss me with this foolishness yes. because if you truly believe that then it goes across the board especially when people are presenting evidence of of having been harmed by someone um so i i don't really respect that at all yeah and when we talked about protect black women you know like the underage women in hip-hop we always talk about that you know people always talk about Aaliyah. But people fail to mention yeah. Foxy Brown, how young yeah. she was oh, when she came out. I know. And then, you know, beyond the, her affiliation with Mr. Jigger, with Jay-Z, and, and mm -hmm. you know, there is speculation that they may have had a relationship. Um, you know, her lascivious lyrics for someone who was like 14, 15 years old at that time. Like, why are we not having these conversations? Like, we're all singing the songs and stuff, but like, this was a teenager. I greatly appreciate you guys. And if you guys like that kind of content, you can also become a channel member to the Patreon and YouTube where you get the full entire recording. The full entire recording. Uh, hit the link down below for the Patreon or the YouTube. You get the full recording. And also for the YouTube members, you guys get to watch it in real time. So you did see a comment from Mike Has Bad Knees because Mike Has Bad Knees is a member of the YouTube channel. So shout out to all channel members. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to the subscribers, people follow, people sharing this, people talking about this, people leave comments. I appreciate all of y'all. All right, man, till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right, later. One.